Thank you. Well, as Terry said, I'm going to talk to you now about our research on very premature infants. Every year, worldwide, 15 million babies are born preterm. And I don't know how well you can see this on this slide, but you can see the majority of preterm infants, so 10 million, are born in developed countries. But the rate is still very high in high to middle income countries at about 5 million per year. In Australia, 8% of babies are born at least one week early, and that accounts for around 24,000 births each year. So it's likely that many of you here in the audience will know someone, whether it be a family member, a neighbour, or a friend, who was born preterm. The rate of preterm birth is on the rise for a variety of reasons, including the age mothers are having um, their first baby and assistive reproduction. But the good news is in Australia, in particular, we have excellent obstetric care and neonatal care, so most babies will survive. But unfortunately, the rate of impairments and disabilities are still very high, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Here we see two babies at the same gestational age of 28 weeks. One baby is developing in the womb in an environment that's very secure, mostly warm, fairly quiet, noises are muffled, it's dark, and the baby can move very freely in the amniotic fluid. The other baby at the same gestational age is developing during a very critical period of brain development in what can be sometimes a very noisy, bright uh, environment where the baby is having very important but invasive medical procedures. As I said, that last um, period or last trimester of development is really important for brain development. And here we have a picture of a baby's brain taken using MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. And at the top we see a picture of the baby's brain looking from the top and at the bottom looking straight on. And what we see at 28 weeks, so as I said around the end of the second trimester, is the brain is looking fairly simple and small. As each week goes on, we can see the brain not only increases in diameter, but what happens is the brain actually increases four to five times in size, and we get this complex folding of the brain. So hopefully you can see here with my drawing with the mouse that um, at 28 weeks, we can see the brain is rather smooth, but by the time we get to term, the brain is looking a lot more complex as these brain folds develop and the brain increases in size. What does this mean long term? Well, for those babies who are born very preterm, so at least two months early, up to 10% of them will have cerebral palsy. But also of great importance is approximately half of these children will go on to have learning, movement, or behavioural problems. And whilst these are fairly mild impairments compared to cerebral palsy, they can have a great impact on how these children function at school, both academically, but also relating to their peers, playing in the playground with other friends and so forth. Importantly, though, we do need to remember that whilst half will go on to have an impairment, the other half will do very well. And there's been many great minds, such as Einstein and Picasso, who have been thought to have been, be, been born preterm. So what our research is looking at is which babies do well and which babies go on to develop impairments or disabilities and why. So our research team, which is called VIBES, or the Victorian Infant Brain Studies, is really interested in looking at how babies' brains develop. Here's a picture of a baby, uh, two pictures of a baby's having MRI scans at the um, Royal Children's Hospital. We're very lucky that we're co-located with Murdoch Children's at the Royal Children's Hospital and we've got an excellent team and a great scanner. And what we can do is feed the babies or the mothers feed the babies. We wrap them up nice and tightly, put them in a bean bag and we can put them in the scanner without any sedation. And then the important part of our research and one of the unique things that we can do, um, not only I think because of the reputation of the Murdoch Children's, but also the Royal Children's and the Royal Women's Hospital where we recruit the majority of our babies from, plus our fantastic research nurses and also I guess the, the actual size of Victoria's, we can get the majority of children in our research studies to come back for follow up. And we have over a 90% success rate in getting children back for follow up. And here's a picture of um, a child having a two-year assessment with a psychologist, having a look at what their fine motor development is like, their gross motor development, and also their intellectual development. What I wanted to talk to you today about is one of our research studies that we've recently finished following up children at preschool age. 
And this was a randomised controlled trial involving 120 babies. And what we did was families either received standard care or they received standard care plus our intervention program. And our intervention program involved nine visits by a physiotherapist and a psychologist over the first year of life. And we worked with the family on parent mental health, infant bonding, and also the infant's development. Here we see in this picture a picture of a, a mother who was having a lot of difficulty getting her baby to settle and sleep. And we worked with her with, getting, with swaddling her baby, getting her to understand her baby's behavioural cues, and getting her to understand ways that her baby could self-settle. So the baby was actually very good at putting its hand in its mouth to self-settle. And the mother found that rather than her having to intervene every time the baby could get upset, that the baby could actually start to self-soothe. And here we have a picture later on of twins at nine months and we're trying to encourage these babies to crawl. So in creating an environment, working with the parents on different postures and so forth to help babies crawl. As I said, this intervention uh, was for the first year of life and what we did at two years was we got the children and their parents to come back in for a follow-up and a comprehensive neurodevelopmental assessment. This is just one of the outcomes that we looked at and we looked at whether they had any behavioural impairments at two years and this was by parent report. What you can see here is that half the children in the control group had a behavioural impairment at two years whereas in the intervention group only 20% had a behavioural impairment so a big difference here. If we look at the parents' actual outcomes of the parent mental health, we looked at whether they had signs and symptoms of anxiety. And again, we see in the intervention group, almost half have um, anxiety at two years, whereas in the control group, sorry, in the intervention group, the rate's much lower at 21%. As I said, we've just recently fo finished following up these children again now at preschool age, and we've found the results to be very similar, which is great news that it's having a longer term effect. We've just recently received funding from the National Health and Research Medical Council to carry out a new study. And what we've done in the past is we've looked at these babies' neurobehaviour and their development once they've gone home from hospital. What we're doing now is actually looking at their development within the first few weeks of life in the neonatal intensive care unit. And what we want to be able to do is to detect problems as early as we can, not only to help parents, but to hopefully develop interventions that we can use and implement during this critical period of brain development. And the other important part of this study that we believe, and it's also a world first, is we're actually looking at parents' mental health. So actually looking at mothers' and fathers' mental health and seeing how they adjust to having a preterm baby from birth and looking at their mental health fortnightly up until they're discharged from hospital and then at regular intervals up to two years of age. So finally, I'd just like to thank um, the rest of our team. We have a fantastic large multidisciplinary team and without them we wouldn't be able to do such not only breadth but depth of research. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our funding support and particularly the donors, many of you who are in the audience today, for their seed funding that's actually helped to get us the first step for many of these research projects that then we've been able to go on and receive NHMRC funding for. So thank you.